Hello, Big Boar enthusiasts. Welcome to another First Friday Fives. This month, I wanted to do a list I feel has been a long time coming. So I'm going to do the top five most iconic Big Boar handguns. Yep, this should be fun, and rather than focus on a caliber, we're going to focus on a specific firearm. But as this is a broad concept with the potential of really setting some folks off, let's put some criteria in place so all the viewers know how we made these selections. Firstly, this is not the five best Big Boar handguns. <laughs> That would be a wholly different animal with a very different group assembled. Nor is this the shooting enthusiast's top five big bore handguns. And it's not going to be the top five most influential big bore handguns of all time either. Although that may be a future list and certainly some crossover is very likely. These are the five handguns that are so iconic, so prolific, that even the non-shooters will likely know them even if only in appearance or name. These are five big bore bruisers that have made a name in the world at large. So let's get this rolling and talk about some icons. Number five, the Smith & Wesson 500. This ultimate big bore powerhouse hits the top for being the champion of handgun force. Well, mass produced force anyways. While this five shooting revolver is not as well known as the other members on this list, it is often known due to it being the now most powerful handgun in the world. The 500 was built from scratch with two goals in mind. First, to regain the most powerful handgun in the world title for the Smith & Wesson brand, and number two, to create a powerful and versatile handgun for hunting the biggest game on the planet. And it achieved both. The 500 Smith & Wesson cartridge that necessitated the making of the large X-frame that became the 500 revolver was designed to be more powerful than the Wildcat cartridge known as the 500 Maximum. And with a higher max pressure rating, 62,500 PSI, and a frame that can handle it, it most certainly did just that, and as you'd expect, it can absolutely take the biggest game on the planet without any trouble whatsoever. But being the biggest and the baddest isn't necessarily the key to being the most iconic. While it is well known for its accolades and its raw power, the fact that it looks like a bigger version of your typical Smith & Wesson revolver keeps the uninvolved and gun-shy, literally, from recognizing it. And while it has tons of power, I've heard more than one very experienced handgun hunter state that the high velocity can actually hinder the performance, in some cases. And even yours truly bruised his palm shooting only 20 rounds, making this handgun a true beast to contend with. You will see it here and there in movies like Red, carried by John Malkovich, and Jurassic World, carried by Omar Sy. But it isn't that common. But without a doubt, it has made a well-earned and well-recognized name for itself. Number four, the Magnum Research Desert Eagle. When it comes to overall big, badass, powerful handguns, the Desert Eagle is without a doubt the reigning champion in the eye of the general populace. Seriously, when it comes to movies and TV shows, this pistol is always on screen, large and in charge. Want to make your character look tough? Hand him a Desert Eagle and watch how tough he looks now. The Desert Eagle was developed in the early 80s by Magnum Research. Originally offered in 357 Magnum and then 44 Magnum, it added the 50 Action Express cartridge that was designed specifically for the Desert Eagle pistol around 1988. And while there is sometimes a misunderstanding that these pistols were designed by IWI in Israel, the truth is they were designed here in the US and that IWI was contracted to build them. And after many years of needing that assistance, Magnum Research was able to build a factory in Minneapolis, Minnesota and started producing them stateside. So where can you see one of these things? Huh, in practically every movie ever. I mean, Eraser, Terminator Salvation, Terminator Genesis, Commando, Last Action Hero, Robocop 1, 2, and 3, Predator 2, I mean, the list is practically endless. Hell, in the Guy Ritchie movie Snatch, Vinnie Jones' friend Desert Eagle .50 is practically a character in itself, and TV has shown it too. In shows like The Sopranos, Miami Vice, Burn Notice, The Walking Dead, and I even remember watching an episode of Perry Mason as a kid, where I recognized a Hitman wielding one. Still, you can't chamber a Magnum cartridge in semi-auto without drawbacks. Let's face it, science is a cruel mistress and her laws of physics are unforgiving. The Desert Eagle is a gas-operated firearm which helps reduce some recoil and puts all that Magnum power to good use moving the slide. But naturally, chambering long cartridges such as the 44 Magnum and 50 AE result in a large, bulky, and heavy pistol. Although weight is always your friend when trying to tame recoil. Still, that makes the Desert Eagle an impractical pistol as a sidearm, but weight is not your only problem. They are known for having somewhat lackluster reliability. 
Now, personally, I've only fired a 44 Magnum Desert Eagle, and my brother owned one for a while in 44 Magnum as well. Neither of us have experienced flawless functioning. But regardless, the pistol is one of a kind and an absolute icon of big bore handguns. Number three, the Colt 1911. Now, if we were to talk about the most influential big bore pistol of all time, you'd be hard pressed to select another firearm than the Colt 1911. Designed by the almighty Lord himself, John Moses Browning, the 1911 was designed to be exactly what it became, the new sidearm for the United States military. It was adopted in 1911, I uh, know, uh, shocking, right? This was the first semi-automatic pistol in U.S. military history, and it beat out several other contemporaries, including the well-known and oft-romanticized Luger. Side note, the Lugers that the U.S. tested were actually chambered in 45 auto So finding one now is kind of like finding the Ark of the Covenant. And if you do, DON'T LOOK, KEEP YOUR EYES SHUT! The 1911 was reliable, rugged, had a seven-round detachable magazine that made reloads quick, and to this day has a very natural ergonomic feel that made it popular, and has continued to make it popular, even more than a century later. Hell, my first experience with anything over a 40 Smith & Wesson was a Norinco made 1911. It was love at first shot, let me tell you. As a testament to how amazingly well-known and popular it has become, it is now made by more firearms manufacturers than I can realistically keep track of. Colt, Smith & Wesson, Springfield Armory, Remington, Kimber, Sig Sauer, Rock Island Armory, STI, Wilson Combat, Magnum Research, Les Bear, Ed Brown, EAA Witness, Ruger, hell, even CZ is now making them. And customizing and optimizing is as easy as there are more parts and options on the market than there are fish in the sea. And you'll see them all the time in TV shows, movies, video games, etc. Stuff like Pulp Fiction, Red, again, Saving Private Ryan, Band of Brothers, Batman Begins. The list is just endless. Almost everyone knows its profile and its look. Now, there are some drawbacks here, too. It's not what we would call high capacity, and many 1911s can be finicky. I like to think of the 1911 like a performance motor. If you start with a solid base, you know, a good manufacturer in this case, and are willing to sort out what works well and what doesn't with ammo and magazines, you can correct any imperfections, if you find any, and you will still have a reliable and high-performing pistol. But some do need more tweaking than others. Still, you have to admit that God, uh, uh, sorry, I mean John Browning, did something right when a century-old design is still considered not only usable today, but is still considered relevant. Number two, the Smith & Wesson Model 29. If a firearm could ever be considered a movie star, the Smith & Wesson Model 29 is that firearm. Developed off of Smith & Wesson's end frame, it was released in 1956 as the first handgun to be chambered in the then brand new 44 Remington Magnum cartridge. Admittedly, due to the tremendous recoil and handguns not really being utilized for more than personal self-defense at the time, the 44 Magnum nearly fell by the wayside. But then came 1971, an actor named Clint Eastwood, and a movie called Dirty Harry. For those who haven't seen it, the protagonist, San Francisco PD's Inspector Harry Callahan, is a loose cannon of a cop who takes no crap and carries the most powerful handgun in the world. The gun was the Smith & Wesson Model 29. The impact on the public was immediate and immense. Model 29s were selling for well over their retail price, and they were selling like hotcakes. And what a hotcake at that! A double-action, full-sized revolver that was powerful enough to realistically hunt medium to large game with, and it had the prestige, reliability, and quality of one of the most well-known firearms brands that ever existed. The 29 did create some problems for those who were not expecting the recoil that came with its now famous Magnum cartridge. To this day, the 44 Magnum is considered by many to be a threshold cartridge, meaning this is as much power as they can handle. And for many, it's way more power than they want or need. Still, its popularity hasn't disappeared, and many people refer to powerful revolvers as dirty hairy guns. In fact, if you play the video game Fallout 3, there is a weapon called Callahan's Magnum. You want to take a guess at what firearm it's modeled after? When it comes to machismo, powerful handguns, and general badassery, the Model 29 was, and always will be, the original big bore badass. Number one. Drum roll, please. The Colt Single Action Army. When people hear 45, 
this is most likely what they picture. When they think cowboys or the Old West, this is the handgun that they will see in their mind or even mention. This revolver really is iconic and made a huge impression on the world it was released into. It was designed in 1872 and put into service in 1873 as the sidearm for the United States military. This was a pretty big deal in its day, six shots before you had to reload, and it used metallic cartridges that were easily extracted, allowing the gun to be reloaded quickly. It really was a true piece of engineering genius for its time, and over the years, it's been chambered in over 30 calibers. Some popular ones for the day, like the 4440, which was also known as the 44 Winchester Centerfire, and some that endure today, like the 45 Colt. And more advanced and modern single actions, like the Ruger Blackhawk, started out being based on the single action army. It's enjoyed many names over the years, such as the Peacemaker, the M1873, and most recognizably as simply the Colt 45. Even old blood and guts himself, General George S. Patton, carried an ivory-handled one. Seen in many westerns like Tombstone, Wyatt Earp, and others, this handgun is instantly recognizable to the masses, and almost anyone knows what you mean when you reference it. It too had its drawbacks, Using an ejector rod to empty brass, while quick for the time, is still a two-handed and sometimes cumbersome process, and most who carried one only loaded five rounds, leaving the firing pin on an empty chamber as the firearms of yesteryear were not as resistant to an accidental discharge when the hammer took a hit as they are today. But the single action army is a symbol of the West, so prominent that it has practically become a historical figure on its own. It was carried by Wyatt Earp, General Patton, and you can still buy a new one from Colt and carry it yourself today. The Colt Single Action Army is, unquestionably, the most iconic big bore handgun, period. Alright guys, let's recount that list before we go. Number 5, the Smith & Wesson 500, the most powerful handgun in the world. Number 4, the Magnum Research Desert Eagle, the quickest way to look tough on screen. Number 3, the Colt 1911 still kicking ass over a century later. Number two, the Smith & Wesson Model 29, one of the few stars to ever outshine Clint Eastwood. And number one, the Colt Single Action Army, the original 45. Thanks for watching guys, and I hope you enjoyed the list. I have to admit, as much fun as it was to put this together, it was a little agonizing deciding who should go where on the list. So if you disagree, please tell me. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this one. If you can, leave us a like, it really helps out. And remember guys, go big boar or go home.